You can drop your questions in the Q&A box. And for the YouTube viewers, you are welcome to drop your questions in the chat. And this is an information to the participants regarding your certificate. Um, in order to claim your certificate, you will have to fill up a feedback form, which uh, the link will be available in the chat after the research person has taken up his session. Without further ado, may I request Mr. Arda Nuntara, Assistant Professor, Department of Commerce and our Vice Principal to deliver his welcome speech. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of the Institute and on behalf of the Department of Commerce, HETIM, I heartily welcome the speaker, Professor Bhartandu Singh, Department of Commerce, Mizoram University, and all the participants in this webinar. We know that some of the participants are joining us from other states. So a very warm welcome to those who join us from outside Mizoram. So due to this COVID-19 pandemic situation, all the institute colleges and schools, schools have been closed for a long time. And it is not possible to organize seminar or workshop in a room. But uh, this situation gives us an opportunity to organize webinar through online Zoom platform. So this is the first webinar organized by the Department of Commerce HETIM. And we select, we select the topic titled on insurance, the most important but the least understood financial product. We may think that the topic is related to commerce subject. Of course, it is related with commerce subject, but this topic is very important and very important and very relevant for all the people. We generally know the term insurance. Some of us might purchase different insurance schemes or policies. However, it is good to have more knowledge about the insurance. So thanks to our speaker once again, Professor Bartendu, sir, for making himself available to give a lecture in this webinar. Once again, I welcome you all and I hope that all of us will get uh, lots of benefit from this lecture. Thank you so much. Professor Barton Singh is working in MZU as a professor in the Department of Commerce. Um, he got his education, BCom, MCom, BEd, and Doctor of Philosophy from Banaras Hindu University, Varanasi. He has been serving Mizoram University for more than one and a half a decade and has led the department efficiently as the head of the department for two terms. He has constantly been guiding and leading research scholars to produce qualitative research works and give remarkable research works uh, and give remarkable contribution in the field of finance. He has published over 40 papers in journals, edited books and proceedings. Um, he has authored and edited six books. He has presented over 55 papers in different national and international seminars. He is a member of many academic and administrative committees, academics and professional bodies. His research interests include financial literacy, stock exchange, financial inclusion, investments, personal finance and behavioral finance. With that, we request Professor Bhatin Singh uh, to enlighten and extend our insight on insurance. <clears throat> Thank you, Sangi, for... Uh for a very good introduction of mine. I don't know how much I deserve. Uh, thanks to Thara for choosing me to speak and interact with people on this platform today, this evening. Uh, I welcome everyone who is uh, online now and uh, 
uh, we are going to talk about insurance usually we feel that insurance is a very dry subject and uh, it's a boring kind of subject and usually uh, we feel a kind of repulsion we see uh, left or right when someone start talking about insurance uh, i hope uh, uh, i will attract your attention towards my uh, talk what i'm going to talk uh, i will try to make it interesting and uh, hopefully uh, as uh, lalan thara also mentioned that hopefully we all will get something out of this uh, presentation so let's hope we get something i will also get many thing from you uh, in form of questions and discussions uh, at the end of this so let's start with the presentation i'll go for uh, the screen share uh, uh, i need to be allowed to share a screen a screen share is disallowed Uh, Sangi, um, allow screen sharing. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, it's working now. So, this is the topic for today's talk: uh, insurance, the most important but least understood financial product. Uh, most important why that we are going to talk about today this evening is devoted for that why this is important uh, but still i am telling it it is least understood because uh, i feel uh, and this is my experience also that at most of the time we are not seeing insurance from a complete picture we are not seeing a complete glance of insurance we see it in parts we don't see it in a complete picture so today i will try to show you the complete picture of insurance and uh, for today's talk actually i have uh, i'm focusing on life insurance only life insurance is just a part of insurance uh, we should be talking about uh, health insurance and other general insurance also uh, but all together everything is difficult to, um, to 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 cover in one talk only so today i took only life insurance because it is the first primary step of insurance so i will focus on life insurance but some example may come for other insurance also so i will try to show you a complete picture how we should see at insurance and if we change our perspective i feel sometime uh, the problem is there in our perspective from which point or from which angle we are seeing it and how we understand it unless we see it from right perspective actually we are not uh, doing insurance if you think uh, insurance is for this thing or that thing it is not for that insurance is meant for insurance so that i will i'm going to uh, focus today let's see how far i'm going to convince you for all uh, it's a popular saying seeing is believing and uh, obviously we should see first and then only we should believe what is happening uh, actually this picture has to do nothing with insurance i just took it um, just uh, going through the websites and searching something something and i got this picture and i was actually started seeing how a person can do like this uh, a scary kind of thing uh, but uh, when i saw the complete picture it's like this a child is playing only so seeing is believing is not complete seeing complete picture is believing so whenever you are talking about you are seeing about insurance try to see the complete picture what usually happens when someone meets us to explain about the insurance policy they show a very small magnifying magnified picture a small corner of that picture the first picture of this is uh, this slide that picture is giving you a complete different concept a complete different uh, view but uh, what we should actually try to see is we should see it from a wider angle we should see it how far it is correct or how far it is fitting what the person is trying to show us so if anyone is meeting you and explaining any insurance policy no harm in believing in him uh, listen to him because he is devoting time to explain you all those concepts so understand it but don't take decision based on his presentation only take a bigger look analyze yourself go through the policy details uh, seeing it from very close see it from a little far set your wide angle and then only you decide 
don't see the first picture see the second picture the child is very happy and is enjoying not that said so see complete picture is believing okay so what i am trying to do in today's presentation is only i am trying to uh, tell you that how to see a complete picture so let's see how far we are going so it's evening time few of you might have taken your dinner or few of you might be waiting for the dinner so let's start with uh, uh, a breakfast or maybe post dinner breakfast so let's see the complete picture of financial planning it is not a one product it is actually a combination of many products uh, like this it's tasty you know? so the base of this whole thing is uh, the base financial goals what is our goal what we want to achieve first thing we need to know we need to decide what i want to achieve then only i can achieve unless i decide i am going to this place i will never reach that place i will because i will not try to go in that direction so first thing and most important thing is to decide your financial goals that is the base of all everything what we are going to talk especially financial planning so first decide your goals clear cut goals should be there then when we are talking about financial planning think about or Uh, analyze about your cash flow how much income is coming to you and how you are making your expenditures so incomings and outgoings you think of that very carefully you start tracking all your incomes all your expenditures uh, on daily basis not on monthly or annual basis do it on daily basis go to canteen 5 rupees tea just note it okay so record all your income actually we are having very limited source of income may be one or two or three maximum uh, but expenditure we are having a lot many so it is very very important to track where my money is going from where money is coming we know but from where money is going we need to know it so tracking is very much important as soon as we start tracking we may come across that how much i can save then i can think once i start saving then only i can decide how much i can invest by investment i mean it is for longer duration for saving is for emergency need or it is just keeping some amount out of our expenditures or out of our uh, earnings for expenditure purpose plus investment purpose when we invest it when we commit this am amount for little longer duration for some return purpose then investment only so after cash flow analysis decide your savings identify your savings and then decide how much you are going to invest uh, then only you can achieve something <clears throat> in between tax planning is required if you can do something and your tax liability can reduce try to avail the, those options so all of you who are under um, tax liability uh, section 80c and some other options are also there under section 10 and uh, so that also you have to you are supposed to go through and try to reduce your tax and we will see some example how to reduce tax or why only we don't go for in uh, tax planning when we talk about insurance so all those things will come later on then very important step in financial planning is deciding about retirement because nearly 30 year 35 years a person's working life is there uh, after 35 years maybe someone some lucky ones are getting 40 years of working life so after that working life after retirement there will be still 20 25 30 years we are going to survive hopefully uh, but will may not be having a complete or regular income during that period so during this first half where we are earning we should save something for the period when we will not earn and we will still enjoy our we want to still enjoy our life so retirement planning is a must everyone should must have a plan for retirement and then estate planning also should be there once you start earning once you start making investments so how you are going to transfer your all estate to the next generation or to whom you want to transfer uh, that planning also is required okay so these are all steps of financial planning and now you will be thinking that why i am not talking about insurance when our topic is insurance actually insurance is not coming into the picture so far because unless i am having my goals i cannot plan for insurance 
okay because insurance is there to ensure that i achieve my goals so that is the top of all this insurance covers all those things whatever are there my financial goals my savings uh, my tax planning my cash flow my retirement estate everything insurance is there to cover up if anything happens to the person who is planning for all those things if anything happens to him then insurance will come into picture it is not part of tax planning it is not part of investment it is not part of saving it is not financial goal insurance is going to cover all of these things so first you have all these thing and then think whether or which insurance is going to help you achieve your goal okay you are want to go to um, chanmari if you want to go to lunglai you want to go to some other district within mizoram uh, you need a sumo or some four wheeler but if you want to go to kolkata you need a train or flight or something isn't it so where you want to achieve unless you decide that you cannot decide which mean which uh, mode, uh, mode of transportation is going to help you reach that place so insurance is like that only you decide what you want to achieve how much is that goal and then insurance will come into picture to uh, to work for you uh, this is a complete picture of our financial uh, life uh, if you see this person saving is there investment is there financial protection means insurance is there and retirement planning is there so we need to plan our um, all future goals like this that how my investment from where my income is coming where i want to save how to invest what after retirement how to operate after retirement then how much insurance required if anything happens to me what happens to my financial plan so all these things we are supposed to decide in that way so it is complete picture of our uh, finance pl uh, financial planning actually this picture is a center spread page of uh, Uh, a magazine business magazine i like this so i took a picture and used it here so now what is financial planning we are talking about financial planning let's ask what is this financial planning so financial planning is nothing but a bridge i am standing at this point current financial position i want to reach at this stage financial planning is this road from which will help me achieve my desired position unless i have this bridge it will be difficult for me to achieve my desired goal my financial position what i want to achieve so for that i must plan and financial planning helps there uh, i talked about some important points under financial planning uh, financial goals and all those things so cash flow management was one of the things tracking cash so i will just uh, take it very fast uh, so these are five ways to plan for our uh, cash management of our cash um, develop management of cash is something like budgeting only tracking our expenditures and income and then planning in advance how much will be my income and expenditure so initially we target our expenditure and income and then we uh, proceed towards um, how uh, how much will be there in future so broadly five methods are there envelop method we decide this much amount is there for this head so we keep this much amount for that particular purpose and whenever that bill is coming we pay only out of that box only out of that envelope so just suppose you are having five heads of expenditure broadly so you keep that much amount what usually you are having expenditure on that head and when that bill is coming pay out of that particular envelope only don't dip into other envelopes and don't dip into your investment take only from the envelope designated for the purpose then 60% rule is there just to simplify everything uh, whatever you are earning your expenditure should be 60% only not more than that so if you are earning 1 lakh rupees expend expenditure should be 60% 60000 if your income is 10000 so 6000 you have to manage remaining will go for charity the remaining will go for uh, for tax half of this means 20% yearly will maybe for your charity or your tax and remaining 20% must go for investment okay for future then there may be a way to track through spreadsheets we know ms excel is there you have some columns some rows with help of uh, with heads of expenditures date wise you analyze it and at the end of the month 
you can submit and then after 12 months you can submit for the year like that uh, spreadsheet is very easy to manage then we can go for budgeting softwares uh, if you search on internet if you search on google play store you will get hundreds of budgeting software so just search budgeting software or budgeting app and you will get hundreds choose one whatever you uh, like take any free app all free apps are very good apps so use them to track your expenditure and later on uh, based on that you can prepare your budget but the problem is what we do is we follow the fifth one fifth one is the method uh, actually on internet while searching something i got this name and i like this name so i'm using it here uh, that is pronounced that something like denial method denial method and that stands for do nothing and hope and that all of us you and me all are doing like this only we are doing nothing for our planning and we hope that everything will be fine in future so this happens in novels this happens in movies but it doesn't happen in practice we need to do something we need to work towards our goal then only we'll achieve just hoping will not help us okay uh, let's go further uh, these are our financial major financial goals for different person different goals are there for different person different um, uh, priorities are there so whatever is there you just list down first step for you is to list down what are the goals you want to achieve maybe purchasing a bike maybe purchasing a car maybe purchasing a house maybe going for um, a tour tourism although in covid time tourism is not um, uh, better to avoid for some time but after that uh, certainly you will be willing to go out uh, then uh, uh, retirement planning is a must for everyone what after retirement so a uh, planning for that is a must then your own marriage if you are unmarried if you are already married then married uh, marriage of your children their education all those are your financial goals maybe some small things maybe some bigger things uh, that depends person to person that differs so first you identify what may be your goal then you identify how far it is from now then how much is its cost how much it cost today if i have to purchase you suppose you are planning to purchase a car after 3 years how much is its car uh, price today if you want to purchase a house after 10 years how much it cost today so that you have to identify so how many years are there to reach that goal then how much is its present cost then certainly after 2 years 5 years price will go up so you have to incorporate inflation in that your car of 4 lakh will not remain 4 lakh after 2 years or 3 years so factor in that inflation as per this calculation shows it will go up to 4 lakh 50000 so you are not supposed to plan for 4 lakh you are supposed to plan for 4 lakh 50000 because you are not purchasing it today okay uh, if retirement planning 35 years away your present cost you are assuming that is 1 crore okay but when you really retire after 30 years or 35 years this 1 crore will be negligible it will be very less actually i will show you some examples uh, in today's presentation itself that uh, today it looks a fancy number 1 crore is a big amount for us no but it is not because it is not today today 1 crore is good enough but after 35 years when you retire after 30 years this 1 crore will not remain 1 crore if you see if 6% inflation is there this 1 crore will become 7.6 crore so don't plan for 1 crore plan for 6 7.6 crore rupees okay like that then you see how much you know investment you have already done you might be doing some savings for all these purpose so how much you have already done how much it will grow not only cost will grow your savings will also grow so how much it will grow that also is there take difference of that and then you can plan how much is the real cost at that time and how much you need to save every price okay so this uh, this is a picture of uh, uh, just assumed hypothetical figures so that you can use as a as, as a reference point but uh, different cal calculations will differ if you want to have your own calculation uh, then you can just search on google just type uh, financial goal planning and you will get some calculator simple calculators are there actually this is also outcome of a calculator only different calculators are used so to identify all those steps so that you can do and you can accordingly decide how much initial investment you are supposed to do okay uh, we will do this one calculation also later on 
then how to achieve all those things some seven eight goals i told how to achieve them is first thing is most important thing is you arrange all those goals in a sequence order based on time short term goals medium term goals long term goals essentials must we be optional ones all those things you identify and then you are supposed to plan for each of the goal first you start planning for an emergency fund immediate need and then you plan for the most important ones and separate plans for all those things don't combine all plans together that i need all together this much amount so i am investing this one place no I have different plans for different products okay don't keep all eggs in one basket diversify keep it in different places so that risk will be lesser okay why all these things i am talking in insurance is because finally we are going to decide our insurance based on our financial goal only so unless we identify our goal unless we start saving unless we start investing unless we uh, identify the things it will be difficult for us to decide how much to go for insurance okay let's see why this is small things important uh you might be seeing this uh, products in market if you see uh one small pack is of 1 rupee but if you see 650 ml of the same product 6 ml is 1 m rupee 650 ml is 325 rupees and usually what we assume is what where we feel is uh, the bigger packs are the cheaper packs money savers are there if we take the bigger pack we save money okay and these producers are actually not giving the things again they are showing the small picture only because we have been fed properly that bigger if we if we, if we purchase bigger packs we save more no actually this product should be of 108 rupees only if 6 ml is of 1 rupee then 650 ml should be 108 rupee but it is available in market for 325 rupees it is 200 times more not 100 it is 325 200 times why if we still want to go for the bigger packs because we feel that if we purchase bigger packs we save but no it is not always that and it is not the uh, one example only see another example nest cafe a smaller pack is of 10 rupees 50 gram pack is 130 rupees now difficult for us to know which one to go for actually it should be this 130 rupees product should be of 67 rupees only okay so it is nearly 200 times costlier than what it should be if you identify these kind of thing invest or purchase the smaller product why to go for the bigger product and unless you analyze unless you see it you will not believe it okay so see the bigger picture and then start believing okay it is not the only thing many such products are there i have taken only these four examples for today but if you search in the market you will get many such examples 200 300 times more they are charging take a smaller pack in these cases there are many such products where bigger pack is as bigger savers it is true very very true for them go for the bigger packs otherwise you take the smaller packs why so why to pay high if it is available for cheaper price and smaller packs are sometime i feel is more convenient also isn't it so go for the smaller one if it is some money saving is there now you must be thinking that i am talking to save 20 rupees 30 rupees only a small amount okay but this is small amount in long duration becomes very big let's see time value of money uh person uh, all all of you who are from commerce or economics background they understand this very easily uh, calculation also you know future value calculation uh, a is equal to p within bracket 1 plus r to the power n simple compound interest formula is there that only simple that what we have studied in class 8th or class 9th compound interest formula that simple formula gives us a very interesting lesson for financial goal let's see if my monthly expenditure is say 25000 rupees today in today's expenditure i suppose i am running my household with 25000 rupees okay when i will retire uh, not i i will retire much before this but uh, few of you will be retiring after 30 35 years so the person who is retiring after 35 years from now 
when he will retire and if inflation is 7% his monthly expenditure will be 267000 rupees for maintaining same lifestyle of 25000 what we are maintaining here for 25000 rupees same level you can achieve with help of 267000 rupees so a small saving a small saving will bring you at that stage okay let's see this same picture from a different perspective if someone uh, usually this is uh, valid for your insurance policies also whenever any insurance policy person uh, agent is meeting you what they used to tell is that you invest this this you you take policy and you pay this 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 amount a small amount here and after 20 years 30 years you will be getting a very big amount they focus on that very big amount only they saw premium is this much and they saw how much is the final amount but let's see that final amount if you receive 1 lakh rupees after 35 ru years from now and if inflation is 7% the worth of this 1 lakh rupees will be less than 10,000 rupees less than 10,000 you are thinking that if you get 1 lakh rupees you will be purchasing a very good bike but no you will not be able to purchase even a normal mobile okay so this way the small things become very big so whenever these people any person is meeting you for any investment purpose or any insurance purpose they actually show you the bigger picture bigger picture means bigger figure not picture they show very small picture only that after this much year you will get this big amount but actually that big is actually not big that becomes very small if you use that same formula a is equal to p 1 plus r to the power n but now p will reverse this side so it become a divided by 1 plus r to the power n and that becomes your principal how much it will become so same small formula of compound interest can help you a lot in your financial planning we are capable of doing so but we are not doing so we are not seeing we are not trying to see the bigger picture that is the problem with us uh, let's see one more thing on investment it's an interesting example if you want to have a corpus of say 5 crore rupees by the time you retire after 35 years okay and you get an avenue where you can get 15 percent return on that what you need to do is you are supposed to save only 3400 per month not per year per month not now it's difficult to save now no so start a little late start after 10 years for the same goal for the same return 15 percent and uh, for say 5 crore rupees but now you are having only 25 years to save and you are supposed to save 15,000 rupees per month if 3,400 was difficult for you to save 15,000 certainly is going to be much difficult so you will never achieve that goal so start early the message of this slide is start early start today I used to say that uh, the best time to start investment was yesterday now you cannot do anything for yesterday so start today second best day is today uh, another options I'm going to give you interesting options. Uh, I'm giving you three options in this slide and I'm assuming that you are able to get 15% return on this. Okay. And these three things are there. You save for first 10 years, 5,000 rupees per month. For next 10 years, you save 15,000 rupees per month. And then next 10 years, you save 50,000, 50,000 per year, uh, sorry, per month okay and invest it in a place where you get 12 percent return then second option for you is you save throughout 30 years of your working life you save 10,000 rupees same amount without any change okay then third option for you is 14,000 for first 10 years and then 20,000 uh, sorry 20 years no saving Okay, different options are there. Different person will explain you this picture differently. But the real picture is whatever option you choose, your final conclusion, your final corpus will be 3.5 crore. Okay, whatever you feel like. So go for anything, but see the bigger picture. How you are achieving at this? Why this 14, why this 10 years saving only is giving you same amount what 30 years saving is not giving? Reason is you are going giving more time for this 10 years to grow over the time. And that's why you are achieving that. 
Okay, so let's go further. Uh, let's see NPS. Many of you maybe uh, are covered under NPS. So let's see how this NPS works and whether it will be sufficient for a retired life or not. So I'm taking one hypothetical figure. Uh, just suppose a person is there with um, who is having basic pay plus uh, dearness allowance of one lakh rupees. Just just round figure so that easy to calculate. Then 10% government contribution, 10% uh, NPS deduction, 10% government matching amount, 20,000 rupees per month is deposited into plan account. I'm assuming that it will increase by 10%. Why? Because one increment is there and two DA, dearness allowances are there. So on an average, nearly 10%, I'm assuming it will increase every year. So current age is 30 years and the person will retire in 60 years. So 30 years he is having. I'm assuming again that average rate of return will be 9.5%. Okay. So in that case, his total corpus at the time of retirement will be 7.5 crore. A very big amount. Um, anyone will be happy to retire with 7.5 crore corpus. Is okay. Let's see what to do with the 7.5 crore. Uh, you can either in cash 60% maximum 4.5 crore and invest 30% for your payment, uh, not 30, 40% for, uh, for for insurance or you can invest everything for insurance, uh, not insurance, uh, pension. Okay, if you invest 40% only, first uh, second column, then you will be getting 2,21,000 rupees monthly pension. Uh, good enough enjoy this life with 2,21,000 per month. Okay, it's a big amount, be happy. If you invest everything, 7.5, uh, you get 5.5 lakh rupees per month. Uh, you will be living like a king. Okay, but these pictures are being shown from today's point of view. Again, a magnifying glass has been used here. Very minute picture is being shown. Take a bigger picture, take a whole sky. And let's see. When you retire after 30 years, and if inflation is 7%, this 2,21,000, which we thought that is very, very high amount, will be worth 30,000 rupees only. Okay, 30,000 is somewhat okay to survive easily. But that same amount you will keep on getting. You will be getting 2,21,000, but that will be worth 30,000 after 30 years. But after 10 years, means when uh, 40 years passed, the same 220,000 will be worth less than 15,000. And think what will happen after 80 years of age. It will be further down, 7, 8,000 only. So it is going to be very tough if you rely only on one source of income. So investment is a must. Why I am telling investment, investment, not on insurance, because investment is also for the same purpose. First thing I want to achieve with help of investment. If anything happens to me, then only insurance will come into picture. Otherwise, I should go by the investment only. Okay, so don't. This also is a, NPS is a kind of insurance only for retired life. Okay, let's go further. Now the real question comes for insurance. If anything happens to the bread earner of the family, insurance will come into picture at that time only. Uh, this picture I got from internet is very, very expressive. In case you can't be there to catch them, make sure you leave a safety net for the child. After playing, if he's coming down, you should be there to catch. Otherwise, you need a cushion. Isn't it? So insurance is only for this purpose, not for other purpose. It is only a safety net. Okay. Uh, if you see the picture behind me, a parachute. Why I'm using this parachute here? Uh, when you travel in flight, uh, that air hostess always reminds us that um, uh, under our seat there is one jacket. Parachute is there in case of uh, some emergency. You can wear it and um, pull it like this or whatever, and then jump and then. It's all those things you know, isn't it? We know that whatever service we are getting in a flight, actually we are paying in form of the fare, whatever we pay, isn't it? So we are paying for that facility, for maintenance of that parachute, we pay. But how many of us want to use that parachute? None of us. 
none of us, I am very sure, no one of us wants to use their parachute because we know in which case we are going to use it, isn't it? Insurance is only that kind of product. When we purchase insurance, what we are doing is we are trying to manage our risk. Okay, when you buy insurance, you transfer the cost of potential loss to the insurance company and you pay a small fee for that for sure. So a big focus is required on insurance. Okay, let's see some pictures. Actually, I think 40 minutes already passed. So I will go a little fast. Uh, these are some data taken from uh, Swiss Re Sigma. That is a reinsurance company, international level. So their report, I got this data. How we Indians are taking insurance, life insurance and non-life insurance. So at world level, average is 55% and 45%. But if you see in India, it is 73% life insurance and non-life insurance is an grossly ignored area in India. Even, uh, but don't be feel very happy that uh, life insurance is very good. Some examples are there, which will tell you that actually that also is very less. This is, these are the number of insurance in India, so no need to go for this. Uh, that is, I was talking about insurance penetration in India. What is insurance penetration? It is measured as the percentage of the insurance premium to GDP. Total GDP, how much percent is total insurance uh, premium in percentage term? And if you see in this picture, it, it has never crossed 5% total insurance. This red one is life insurance. The blue one, the lower one is non-life insurance. And this green one is total. Some of these two together. It never crossed 5% in India. Let's see what happens at world level. Ah, this is the picture. India is very less. If you compare this with other countries, we are far, far away. We are far, far back in terms of insurance. So insurance penetration in India is very less. That is very risky thing. That's not at all a good sign. Let's see insurance density. Density means total insurance premium paid through all policies divided by population. So per head, how much is insurance premium? And if you see this picture, uh, it has never crossed $70 per head. $70 total, both including life insurance and non-life insurance. And at world level, where we stand is just see negligible. India's position is negligible on international level. Other countries are far, far better than us. So we have to be aware about the use of investment uh, insurance and we should go for that, that we are not doing. So awareness is required. Now, why insurance planning? Why should we plan for insurance? That I already told you, it is like a parachute. And uh, if you don't have this insurance the first time when you need, probably you never need it again. So have an insurance beforehand and it should be used only for that emergency, not for other things. Okay, so just whenever you think about insurance, you think it is a parachute and you are in a flight. When you need it, how much you need it, everything that parachute will tell you. No need to talk about anyone else. Okay, uh, this is uh, types of risk. Uh, I will go a little fast. It is any book you will get this kind of things. Broadly, three kind of risks are there: personal risk, property risk, liability risk is there. Under personal risk, broadly premature death. That actually we are talking today. Poor health and insufficient income is there. Property risk is direct loss. You are having a car and accident is there. You are having a house and because of earthquake collapsed. So that is direct loss. You lost that. And indirect loss is because of that you are losing something. You had a house. You have given it on rent and that collapsed in earthquake. So now you will not be getting rental income. So indirect loss. Okay. And liability risk is relating to uh, business. Okay. So let's uh, go and let's try to identify different kind of uh, risks, how to manage this. First, we identify the risk and then we try to manage those risks. So let's try to uh, divide different kind of risk in different boxes, these four boxes. So let's see the severity of risk, how much severe the risk is. Low on left side, high on right side. Okay, so left side, both boxes are low right side high okay and now let's see the frequency higher is upside lower is below and then 
both down boxes are low frequency upper boxes are high frequency okay now this is the place where we have to take some decision first two boxes the top boxes the upper ones high frequency ones we need to control the risk how to control it by reduction of risk low cvrt is there and high frequency is there cvrt is not very big but frequency is very high okay the people are having headache or backache backache is a big thing actually uh, but um, headache okay every weekend after um, many many works we get some headache okay cvrt is not very much just sleep proper take full sleep and it will be okay if more is there then take a small medicine and you will be okay without medicine actually headache can be cured but frequency is high okay no need to do anything try to reduce it try to reduce your risk that's all will help you now high cvrt cvrt is very high you cannot ignore it and high frequency is also there okay these kind of things you have to control you have to avoid this kind of things like uh, bungee jumping kind of games or uh, miners who are going in the mines for digging coal and all those things they are taking very high risk and cvrt is very high death but the problem is insurance is not available for this it is clearly written on all insurance policy that uh, if you are doing this risky works you don't get any insurance okay so you have to try to avoid this kind of thing don't go for these kind of risky things high speed uh, motor biking which is very common so avoid that there is no insurance for that thing and then the lower two boxes are for risk finance you need to finance these things you cannot avoid so low cvrt and low frequency once in a year it will happen and it is not much like a fever okay so you have to retain it take two days cl rest at home and you will be fine once in a year or two is twice in a year is there and casual leave is given for the purpose okay so retain it with you no need to do anything what you have to do it actually is when cvrt is high and frequency is low insurance is required there risk transfer you have to do it will happen only once accident and uh, death may be there so cvrt is very high but it will happen only once for many people it will not happen actually so frequency is very less so for this fourth box actually we need to go for insurance uh, these are insurance types so we know it so i will just skipping it actually i am going behind time so why you should go for the insurance is just for risk cover not for tax saving not for investment not for any other purpose insurance is only meant for insurance nothing that more than that and nothing less than that it is for risk cover let's see some uh, some more um, calculations how we can uh, uh, arrive how much i can decide that uh, how much insurance i should take so this is some uh, example uh, i think uh, uh, they are recording this video is going to be recorded and you can refer it back and see the calculation i will go a little fast in this calculation uh, someone is there who is 29 year old now and his monthly income is 1 lakh rupees his personal expenditure on himself is 10000 if he dies no need of this 10000 rupees and personal insurance is there so that also will stop so these two are expenditure which are on him itself expected inflation is 6% expected return on interest is 8% in that case inflation adjusted return monthly will be 0.189 it is calculated with help of this formula uh, you can take a snapshot of this uh, screen or uh, through your video recording you can get this formula and you can calculate in the for yourself this particular thing now we are going to use these figures for income replacement i want to replace the income so total income was 1 lakh 17000 rupees was his personal expenditure personal expense and insurance so total 83000 rupees per month is his total income to 83000 multiplied with 12 it become 9 lakh 96000 rupees annual okay so he need to cover this much amount with help of insurance that is the way to decide how much insurance i should take and we what we do is someone comes and tells you take 1 lakh rupees insurance and that is all no you have to go through this kind of process to identify how much insurance you need okay this is income replacement method there is another method is called um, uh, uh, expenditure method or need method how much actually you need 
So that method will reduce that size actually. That will be more realistic in the way. Uh, but anyway, I'm using this example only, but you can go by that method also. So 9,96,000 rupees annual we need. So how much corpus I need? For that, this is small example, little complicated. Anyway, you can solve it because it is a matter of insurance. So calculate it. This I we have just calculated in the previous slide, 10189. 31 is year till retirement, 31 years. And 9.96 lakh is the insurance he need. Um, 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 uh, this annual expenditure is going to be covered. Okay. And then you solve this formula and you will get how much insurance you need. So it is 2.3 crore rupees insurance required to cover 1 lakh rupees income, uh, 83,000 rupees monthly income. Okay. So this much efforts you have to take to decide how much insurance should be there. It should not be 1 lakh rupees, 5 lakh rupees, 40,000 rupees kind of insurance. Okay. Uh, let's see why we should not compare insurance premium with tax planning. Uh, I'm taking two examples. LIC single premium endowment plan, uh, where premium is 46,689 rupees. And if you go for this, and if you are 30% bracket, you will save 14,000 rupees tax. So actually you are investing 46,000 rupees and 14,000 rupees tax saving will be there. If you don't have any other saving, then you will get this. So effectively 32,600 you have invested. Okay. This mature, this policy will give you 2,53,000 rupees after 25 years. Okay. Now I'm telling if you are going only for tax planning, why to tax plan with insurance? Why not with PPF? PPF is also government backing is there. Same amount you invest in PPF. Same amount of tax you will save. Same effective saving is there. And maturity amount will be little bigger than that. Because today rate of interest on PPF is gone down to 7.1%, which usually remains 8.5%. In last two years, it has gone down drastically. Future, it will increase. So your return will also increase accordingly. Okay, so if it is only tax planning, why insurance? Why not PPF? Okay, so if anyone is telling you take this policy for tax saving, no, you tell no, I will go for some other option. Okay, now let's see term plan with some other plans, endowment plans. Okay, age, I'm taking example, age 30 years, term plan he's taking for 35 years, and some assured is 50,000 rupees, 50 lakh rupees. That I actually say is an insurance. In the previous example, uh, what insurance we take was very less. If anyone is taking insurance of 1 lakh rupees, I don't assume it as a 1 lakh insurance at all. Okay, so take bigger amount which is going to help you really as a replacement of income. Okay, then LIC new GVL plan is there. You have to pay 13,000 rupees per month or 1 lakh 52,000 rupees per annum to take this GVL Anand policy. Maturity will be 2.5 crore rupees, a big amount is there and insurance is of 50 lakh rupees and lifelong premium uh, lifelong uh, insurance will be there after 35 years also insurance cover will be there this is one policy and another policy is there where you are supposed to pay 7600 700 11700 and maturity is 2.57 lakh crores okay i am telling you that don't go for this endowment plan why don't we go for e term plan LIC itself, same, everything is same. Now, insurance premium is less than 10,000, 9,663. Okay, compare it with 13,000 per month, it is per annum, 9,600. Okay, so actually you are saving 10,700 per month. Why per month? Uh, I have taken this example, 138,000 minus 9,000, so it become nearly 129,000 divided by 12 and you will be getting somewhere 10,700 rupees per month. Okay, invest this 10,700 per month in a place where you get 8.5% is easy to get actually in long run and your return will be 2.8 crore rupees. Other two were giving you less than that and insurance is same. So the scheme is you save 9,000, uh, no, you, you take insurance policy E-term plan for 9,663, same life cover, same age, everything, 50 lakh, anything happens to you, 50 lakh rupees will be coming from LIC. If nothing happens to you, remaining amount, whatever you are saving, invest in some other place. 
and you will be having some amount at the end which is bigger substantially bigger than the endowment plan so why to go for endowment plan why not term plan so term plan is the only insurance plan rest all are not real insurance so go for real insurance okay let's see one more example term plan offline and term plan online okay let's compare i'm going a little fast i think i'm late now so 30 years age 25 years period up to 55 years of age is covered and 24 lakh rupees sum assured LIC G1 Anmol G1 plan, you have to pay 9,546 per annum. No survival benefit. In term plan, if nothing happens, no casualty is there, then no amount is being paid. Okay, that is a very peculiar thing in this policy. If anything happens, you get the sum assured. If nothing happens, there is no survival benefit. You get nothing if uh, you survive. But you survive itself is a big relief for you, isn't it? And plus, I'm telling you, if you're taking E-term plan, your insurance premium will be 4,600 only. It means you are saving 407 rupees per month. Okay, this amount is given in per annum. So 9,500 minus 4,600, nearly 5,000 rupees. Uh, 5,000 rupees divided by 12 will be somewhere 407 rupees. You invest this in a place, in a mutual fund, which gives you 12% return, and you will be getting 7.7 .7 lakh. If anything happens, LIC will pay 24 lakh. If nothing happens, you survive. This policy, the mutual fund, will give you 7.7 .7 lakh. In this case, if you are going for offline plan, term, offline term plan, you get nothing. Here also you get nothing if you survive, but remaining amount if you submit, deposit, same amount, nothing is going out of your pocket, additional amount. It is part of that amount only what you are giving in offline. Invest it and you will be having a good return. Let's take little bigger amount. Let's take for 50 lakh rupees for 35 years period. Uh, Amuli G1 2 plan is there. Annual premium is 15,281. And LIC E term plan is there, same amount uh, what we have used previously in a previous example. For 50 lakh, it is 9,663 rupees per annum. Difference is somewhere 5, 6 lakh, as a 1,000 rupees per annum. If you divide it by 12, monthly 468 rupees will be there. If you invest this additional amount, what you are saving by taking E term plan, if you invest it, at the end of 35 years, you will be having more than 30 lakh rupees. Return will be there. If you go for offline mode, 15,000 you are paying and survival benefit is nil. If you take online term and remaining amount you invest in a mutual fund, you will be getting 30 lakh. Now you can say that 12% you may not get, you may get 10% or 8%. Okay, not 30 lakh, you will be getting 25 lakh, 20 lakh. Okay, so is better than nothing isn't it so go by this way see the complete picture don't believe if someone is telling that this is this no see your perspective and see which one is fitting to you which one is fitting in your financial plan and then accordingly you go i told you that um, premium if, if you if you if you survive there is no survival benefit you get nothing if you survive Okay, then some companies brought this product that you take term plan, but if you survive, you get whole of your premium, whatever you have paid return. Okay, if something happens, that premium is the uh, insurance is there, you will be getting that insurance as term plan. And if you survive, whole of your premium will be returned to you. Okay, it's something like you are having um, sweet in both the hands, isn't it? You are getting term plan and you are getting your premium back. Let's see. Uh, I'm taking this term plan, simple term plan. Uh, I, I actually, I searched for um, return of premium term plan from LIC, but I couldn't get any example to discuss. Only last night I was searching for this. Uh, I couldn't get it, so I took it from some other insurance company, but uh, I will not take name of any company here. Uh, only LIC name I have taken. Other name I'm not going to take, so I'm not giving this name, but if you search on internet, you will get this kind of thing. Uh, some brochures you will be getting to compare it. So term plan, uh, for them, if you want to take 10 lakh insurance and uh, term is 10 years, then premium is 2,751. 
okay total premium what you pay in 10 years is 27510 okay if you take return of premium plan okay for same 10 lakh rupees for same 10 year premium uh, uh, term 10 years premium is 32195 compare 2700 and compare with 32000 okay so total premium what you are paying in this case is 3,21,000 compared with 27,000. Okay, but anyway, they say that they are giving return of all 3,21,000 rupees back to you. In this case, term plan case, 27,000 will not, you will not get if you survive. Okay, plus one more thing this term plan return of premium is giving is five years free insurance up to five lakh. Okay, next five. So you're taking insurance for 10 years, so you get insurance for 15 years. Uh, half, five lakh rupees for extended five years. So that is additional benefit they give. Okay, let's see this side. If you save this much, 29,444 per annum you are saving. Instead of paying 32,195, you are paying only 2,700 per annum. So you are saving 29,400 per month per annum. If you invest it in a place which gives you 12%, you will be getting 5,70,000. In this case, you are getting 3,21,000 return only. Here you are getting 5,70,000, substantially high. Now you will say 12% is very high. Okay, keep it in saving bank account, 4% return only. Still you get 3,62,000 in Return premium only 3,20,000. It's still 40,000 more than that. Why to go for return of premium? Go for uh, taking a uh, well decided plan. What well deciding you are doing? You are taking a plan, proper insurance, and then remaining amount you are investing somewhere. And this way you will be uh, earning more than that. Uh, this is just a claim settlement ratio. If you search on internet, you will be getting this kind of chart how many terms they settle. If 1,100 claims are coming, how many they are settling, that you can get on internet. Uh, now let's see, do our bad habits impact our financial life? Bad habit means smoking and drinking. So let's see one example. A person, uh, I'm assuming one packet is of 23 packet uh, branded cigarettes is 250. I took this price from internet. Uh, I'm assuming that a person, chain smoker is there who smokes two packets per week. So altogether, eight packets in a month he's using. So total 250 multiplied with eight is 2000 rupees is his expenditure on cigarettes per month. Okay, I'm suggesting him to discontinue cigarettes. It's always better to discontinue cigarette. Okay, instead save these 2000 rupees in a mutual fund. Okay, for the next 30 years. Okay, I'm assuming that average rate of return on this will be 12%. And I'm assuming that expenditure, if you continue cigarette, it will increase, keep on increasing with 10%. If it is so, at the end of 30 years, you will be having 1.2 crore rupees out of quitting cigarette. 1.2 crore, mind it again, it is not 1.2 lakh, it is 1.2 crore rupees. How come you get this amount? By quitting cigarette. And it is always better to quit cigarette, isn't it? And uh, cost of treatment is ignored here. All value trips and all other things are, you are going to save on that also, isn't it? Your social life will be better, your health will be better, you will be enjoying your life more, plus 1.2 crore rupees after 30 years. Okay, and not only this, if we extend it to insurance, let's see how much it is going to impact on our insurance. This example we just took, same example what I took in previous example, LIC, E-term plan for 30 years, 50 lakh rupees saving premium, uh, some assured, term plan for 35 years. Premium is 9,663. The same example we took, it is for non-smoker category, if you are non-smoker. If you are, red flag is there, if it is a smoker, they call it aggregate category, same LIC policy, same age, same insurance, same term, Insurance will be, and premium will be 12,000 yearly, 13,000. 3,000 more, 3,300 more. Okay. If you quit smoking, if you're not, if you're not quit, if you were not a smoker, you could have saved this 3,315 rupees per annum. In 35 years, you could have saved 1,16,000. And with 12% return, it could have been nearly 18 lakh rupees. 
earlier you got 1.2 crore rupees now 18 lakh again here and plus saving on your health expenditure and all those things so quit cigarette let's see even bigger picture a bad habits a cigarette is not only one bad habit some other things are also there so i'm assuming a 30 year old person surviving up to 80 years of age uh, his um, expenditure is growing by 7% and its interest rate is 12% and these are the bad habits he is having tobacco alcohol and junk food okay i'm assuming this 10 per day on tobacco 500 per week on alcohol i'm assuming 100 per day on junk food kfc mcdonald and all those things all those snacks what we used to take all those things if we save if we quit we will certainly save our health our health will be much better than what it could be with these things okay plus if you save it you are showing going to save 36 crore rupees in that lifetime your life your health will be better plus 36 crore rupees you will be saving out of these quitting these three okay which is very very realistic target actually you can quit easily and the problem is we don't save that is the problem that is sure so if you save successfully 36 crore rupees richer you will be now some conclusions uh, one should take efforts to set financial goals throughout we talk about financial goals then insurance is meet only for risk cover term plan is the best insurance plans we have already compared with many plans every income earner having dependents must take insurance plans ought to take i say they must ought to take the plan never club insurance with investment and i have seen examples we have seen some examples we should not club with insurance insurance should be kept separate take insurance eat a plan and remaining balance amount to invest in mutual fund or some other place which will grow faster Never take insurance policy to save tax. We have seen example for that. And we study different policies before taking any, any, any product, whatever you are taking. Okay. Now, usually I finish my presentation with a quote from Mahatma Gandhi. So the quote is, in the new millennium, there will be enough for everybody's need, but not for everybody's greed. So need is going to be fulfilled, but don't be greedy. Okay. Thank you. And that's all for my presentation. So over to you, Sanghi. Uh, Sanghi, uh, yes. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for your instructive oh, you. and applicable talk on insurance. And I think we all agreed that it was the most interesting we had so far this year. And before we move on to the q and I would like to remind the participants that uh, the feedback form, the link is available in the uh, chat box and you are required to fill up that form in order to receive an e-certificate. Uh, so we'll move on to the Q&A round. Um, okay, okay, so I will read out the questions and okay, okay, uh, okay. you can answer from it. Yeah. Okay, from uh, the first uh, question. Should I, should I take from... questions or you're asking? You're asking, okay. So, uh, yeah, I will ask. I will ask okay. the question. I will read out the questions for the uh, participants. Okay. okay, if, okay. Uh, the first question we have: um, Both public sector banks and private sector banks have life insurance policies or schemes. Which one is better? Uh, both public and private sectors are there, so both are good. Both are good because um, we are having a very good. Uh, uh, what to say, uh, the, the, the body which is regulating it, the best regulator in the world maybe you can say we are having, uh, IRDA, Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority. They are regulating it very strictly. So if you have not given a wrong statement in your, claim, in your policy, if you are a smoker and you are telling you are non-smoker, then there may be some problem. But if you are giving all facts correctly, then no one can deny so if no one is going to deny, then you have to choose based on uh, some other factors like uh, what is the premium and what are some other rights, some other uh, add-ons are possible or not. So uh, compare those add-ons, what you need. Uh, what I took example for all plain turn plans. Uh, if there is some riders, usually better to avoid riders uh, if it is not uh, very interesting to you. But you compare it all with uh, others and see which one is having lesser premium and then see that uh, slide I show you that uh, claim settlement ratio chart. Uh, see that also 
to a company which is having high settlement ratio and take any company all are good compare i have taken only lic an example because i want to make it comparable everything should be compared uh, i am not comparing with other companies if you go for some other companies actually insurance premiums are lesser than lic so you compare based on that and all companies are good okay next okay thank you sir and the second question is how can i buy secure in life insurance policy uh, how can i buy secure life insurance policy means uh, i couldn't get what is secure uh, actually life insurance is for security only um, uh, secure life insurance i feel is how to securely means there is uh, no misleading thing i think i feel so so uh, for that better you go on internet search all companies which uh, which are there who are working which are working see their policies term plans go for online term plans compare their policy their terms and uh, their premium and all those things and then you choose one and try to pay online fill the form yourself that also is a big problem actually uh, sometime our insurance fr agent friends are filling forms on our behalf and they make some statements which are not correct i remember long back i took one of my friend uh, forced me to take one policy and i took that policy and uh, some medical test was there a small test was there weight and all those things he took my weight and my weight was little higher than you know by seeing me that i am little heavier so my weight was little higher than the that uh, the level which it should be ideal thing so he wrote it less i was some 85000 85 kg not 1000 sorry 85 kg but he wrote 75 kg only miss statement uh, i am not a smoker so he took non smoker only but for many smokers they say non smokers so miss statement they give and those are actually forming reason for rejection so you fill your own details and correctly you fill it and it will be through so take it online if possible and fill yourself and only correct information and uh, pay online and then it will be safe yes sange okay for the next question we have from lara mayomi what is the contestable period in insurance policy contestable period uh, i couldn't get this point what is contestable contestable i am not very sure what is this contestable period in insurance policy but uh, usually insurance policy terms i think he is is asking about how long uh, how much uh, term should be there so that should be our working life why we are taking insurance is uh, throughout our discussion what we did is uh, why we are taking insurance is only to cover our uh, income if anything happens to the bread earner then for the replacement of that income isn't it so we should take insurance till the working life so for me retirement age is 65 so if i am taking an insurance policy i should go up to 65 years of age okay like that you decide you may go up to 70 years also okay 2 3 years insurance is of no use actually you take early and that will be better okay okay sir i think we can clap the two uh, questions here um according to you which lic plan is best for children and what is lic new children's money back plan okay so one thing um, don't go for child plan you go for term plan because child plan for child plan you go for in mutual fund or some other investment because that is an investment if you are planning for children means you are planning for investment only so take a term plan proper term plan full amount term plan and remaining amount you invest for children in some other place where it may grow faster so i feel keep children plan away from insurance insurance should be term plan only and amount should be separately invested for child plan child not child plan in mutual funds or some other place not necessarily mutual funds some other place and second thing is also for child plan i feel take life insurance e term plan and some amount separately for insurance uh, for child and everything yes uh, okay sir uh, moving on to the next question it's from our nalram uh, ayomi which bank offers the best policy in mizoram uh bank uh, again you have to compare it is comparative thing what kind of thing you want and what kind of thing um, uh, what kind of products are available in the market and go for term plan only 
okay compare all banks hdfc is having sbi is having ici is having uh, all these are available here axis bank also i'm not very sure uh, so you compare their policies and decide give proper statements only don't give any misquotation and compare the policy term all all are good all term plans are good okay um okay sir i think we can also club these two questions together um is term plan the same as fixed deposit how safe is mutual fund investment i think we how can club together is, uh, yes we may club um term plan is not like fixed deposit because fixed deposit is fixed for a fixed period you give you deposit it once and then for that fixed period 5 years or 10 years or 3 years whatever it will mature after that there is no insure no insurance after that period it will mature and that much amount will be given to you in term plan you are paying monthly or annual premium for that long longer than that period and if anything happens if the investor uh, the life insured dies then only that money will be paid back to him the sum assured will be paid otherwise not so both are entirely different thing there is no relation between these two things and how safe is mutual fund so certainly mutual fund is not very sure uh, safe uh, risk is always there if you see in last 6 month market has gone down in march in january it was somewhere 42000 points sensex and in march it went down to 26000 so sudden Uh, down was there but now in within 2 3 months again it is nearly 40000 38000 39000 it has again gone up so it will keep on going up and down so that will be there in long run you will be gaining only uh, don't aim for 15% return 12% i gave in examples but 12% i feel is little on higher side expect 10% 11% 9% and that much you will be getting in long run i hope so it is risky but not very risky and don't invest in only one mutual fund do it in two different kind of mutual funds or over, non overlapping mutual funds okay um okay this is from dalmal somarate how long does it take to claim the money in case people are in a state of being available to claim um uh, policy on death if it is there if they they claim that they are not taking much time some insurance companies are telling one day payment some are telling within 3 days they pay some is, uh, companies are telling that some percent 50% or 20% they pay immediately as soon as the claim is coming and after all formalities remaining amount is being paid so different companies are claiming different things and uh, unless a person dies can never see the heaven no? so i don't know actually what happens so but they claim it is in 2 3 days they pay most of them okay uh, mo moving on to the next question uh, elarin mona chakswa uh, for auto rickshaw drivers or owners it is quite bothersome as traffic police always check frequently uh, so my question is is insurance necessary for them uh okay so now he is talking about i think uh, auto insurance not life insurance so in auto insurance that is a must obviously it is a must uh, in auto insurance there are two kinds of uh, insurance uh, one thing is uh, third party insurance and one thing is for himself his own life uh third party is a must without third party insurance you cannot bring your vehicle on road that is punishable so that has to be taken and that is not very high also it is uh, moderately low Uh, if you want to safeguard your own life then you have to take that additional rider but you can ignore it it is not essential it is not a must so yes if it is third party insurance it is a must without that you cannot run although it is burden some but you have to take yes yes uh this is from aladdin kimi khangte okay okay uh, difference between government insurance and private insurance uh um, government insurance and private insurance uh, uh, it may be government company or private company uh, so government company means uh, uh, lic is one government company government backing is there other companies are private companies but there is no difference in these two provided they are paying and they will pay if you are not uh, miss giving any miss statements they have to honor your insurance so uh, i feel there is no difference between both the companies Uh, if it is uh, private and 
public company as far as private and public company is concerned. Only LIC is there in public space. Rest all are private only. SBI also is private. All are private. Okay. Um, then uh, I, this may be having another thing that uh, it is uh, uh, insurance because of job, job related insurance. My employer is having some insurance or my own insurance. If this is the angle, then uh, better go for both because uh, we can change our employment. Today I'm here, tomorrow I may go somewhere else. So I cannot transfer my insurance in that case. So better I take my own personal insurance and obviously I should take benefit of my government uh, employer benefit also. Okay. Uh, moving on to the next question from an anonymous attendee. Is there a waiting period before coverage goes into effect when buying a life insurance policy? Are there and there are there circumstances where benefits are not planned? Uh, yes, uh, there is some waiting periods are there for almost all policies. Uh, and that differs also. That differs on company by company. It differs, but it is not very long. It may be 15 days or 20 days or sometimes one week only. But there is some uh, waiting period is there. So uh, if anything happens between that period, uh, there may be a problem in settlement. But that is very small. It is not one or two years. So only 10, 15 days only. So after that, uh, uh, there is no reason to deny if you have taken, if you have completed that period, and that period is actually given for the for the um, for 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 the insured person also, and that uh, you go through the terms and condition and you see whether what you applied is same thing you got or not. So ten days review period is given to us also. If we are not happy, we can surrender the policy, um, and only paperwork charges will be deducted, and rest all premium will be refunded to us. So that period is there so that I can judge whether this compare that policy is good or not. Uh, and after that, it will be start functioning. And uh, one more question was added with this, uh, where benefits are not planned. And there are circumstances where benefits are not planned. Uh, benefits, uh, I couldn't get this question. Uh, I think uh, there are some reasons when benefits will not be paid to us. And um, um, only one reason I could see is wrong statements given by the person who is getting insurance. If I'm not giving the real inf information, in that case only benefits may be denied. Otherwise, there is no reason, I don't see any reason why company will not pay. Because IRDA is there to look after, ombudsman is there, you can file a claim there and they have to pay your premium, uh, your insurance with uh, punishment also. So they don't deny. If you see that chart claim settlement ratio, most of the companies are having more than 95% claim settlement. Okay, so they are paying. There is no reason to deny it. But always better to go by a big company, good company only, and give right facts only. Yes. Yes, okay, we, yeah, we are now coming to the last question for tonight. Um, uh, the equation is with the expected inflation is fixed deposit a good idea. What will the money I make over 10 years be really increase after the inflation? Okay, with expected inflation, inflation is nearly 6% as of now and fixed deposits are giving you somewhere 7% or 6.5% only. So nearly same amount, whatever is inflation, same amount is there in uh, fixed deposit. Inflation may increase further. It may go to 7% or 8%. If you see the year 2010, 2011, inflation was nearly 10, 11%, nearly 11%. Okay, uh, but fixed deposit at that time was giving 8.5% only. So inflation was more than fixed deposit returns. So fixed deposits are not very safe as far as inflation is concerned. Uh, but uh, it's better than saving bank account. So instead of keeping money in saving bank account, you can keep it in fixed deposit. But rather it's better to move from fixed deposit to uh, debt funds, debt mutual funds, money market. Uh, those are also very much safe, lesser safe than fixed deposit, but quite safe. Uh, invest in government bonds and you will be getting higher than fixed deposit. So that will be better to invest with. And if you want to know how much return is there, then uh, that compound interest formula you can use A is equal to P within record one plus R to the power N and any amount you can calculate with help of that. Or you go on Google and type uh, interest calculator or and that calculator will come in front of you. It is very easy to search. Okay. 
uh, yes. sir, uh, sorry, sir. One more question. Okay. Has, uh, yeah, there's one more question. Um, is waiver of premium benefit essential in life insurance? Uh, waiver of premium insurance. Uh, these insurance are usually given in child plan. Uh, what happens here is if um, if a person has taken a child plan in name of his son or daughter, and if he dies before the maturity of the plan, in that case, uh, no need to pay any insurance premium uh, uh, after after his death. But insurance premium, uh, insurance policy will remain in force. And when it was supposed to mature, it will mature and money will be paid in the same manner. Only thing is no need to pay insurance premium if the person dies. Okay, that is the concept of uh, waiver of uh, premium. Usually it is there in uh, child plans. But what I'm telling is don't go for child plan. I'm telling go for term plan only for insurance, pure term plan. So you will be saving much amount as some examples are there. I gave you uh, that uh, term plan and child plans, big difference is there in their premium. So that bigger amount, what you are saving because of term plan, if you invest it in some other place, mutual funds, which may give you certain return, PPF, open a PPF, it is giving you more than 7% as of now. So if you are, um, uh, if you invest in there, with certainly you will be getting higher than what you can save for uh, child plan. So don't go for child plan, go for uh, term plan only. And remaining amount, you invest in a place which can give you some return. Okay. Yes. Thank you again, sir, for sharing your time and experiences with us. And with that, we would end our session for tonight. And may I request uh, the webinar coordinator, Ms. Sila Rintuangi, uh, to give a of thanks, and that would be the end of our webinar. Um, Greetings to all the participants, our resource person, and everyone attending the webinar tonight. Uh, before I start my vote of thanks, I would like to uh, inform all the participants, all the attendees, to fill up the link uh, given in the chat box uh, the, for feedback, feedback form in order to uh, claim for the e-certificate. Um, on behalf of the organizing team and on behalf of the Department of Commerce, first of all, I spread uh, my most sincere thanks to the Lord Almighty. And uh, I want to thank our speaker uh, for the evening, Professor Bartendu Singh uh, from the Department of Commerce, Mizoram University for uh, accepting our invitation and uh, for his valued and insightful lecture he had given on the important uh, financial product uh, uh, insurance. Uh, further, a big thanks to all the participants and registrants because of whom this webinar was a success. I hope you all had an enlightening and informative session. And I would like to uh, inform everyone that uh, we had around 170 registrants and uh, out of which more than 100 of us have attended through the Zoo, uh, Zoom webinar. And we were on live on YouTube and many participants were also attending through the YouTube. I would like to mention that. Uh, this webinar was made possible only because of the entire organizing team and especially our technical team. I would like to express my sincere gratitude to, the, to them, especially our technical team. Um, and I extend my thank to the uh, principal, Haitim, the vice principal, the IQSC, and all the faculties of other departments for their constant support and their prayers. Thank you so much, everyone, for attending. Thank you once again. Uh, from the Department of Commerce and uh, from the college. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you.